our semester is winding down, believe it or not. Um, after today, we have three more classes, All right? Because next week, we have class on Tuesday, but not on Thursday for Thanksgiving. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Next week, okay. For the longest time, I was thinking the week after next was Thanksgiving. So that, that's why I always have to, like, stop and think. But anyhow, we have a, a class Tuesday on next week for Thanksgiving. Uh, the following week, we then have a class Tuesday and a class Thursday. My intention is, as of now, and again, we'll have to see exactly where we are at with it, would be to have that last Thursday be a work day for the project, just to kind of wrap everything up. So essentially, that gives us uh, today and two more classes. All right. Uh, I want to at least cover the material that you need to do all your assignments. And if I'm not mistaken, the one thing that we need to discuss that we have not discussed is the concept of state. Okay, state in a web application. All right. What does it mean when we talk about the state in a web application? What it knows at that particular Yeah, what it knows, it, it, its status, uh, the current conditions. Let me give you an example. And, and, and again, um, sometimes you know, you'll hear the phrase, you know, maintaining state. You need to maintain the state. Um, this is brought on by the fact that, and I say this in all my classes, and I have a feeling that depending on the specific class, how deep it sinks in. But I think this is one of the classes where this, this will really be meaningful. But HTTP, the protocol, is stateless. Can anyone explain what that means when I say it's a stateless protocol? Yeah, the protocol itself, is, from the perspective of the protocol itself, every request is a brand new request. All right, it's a brand new request coming in. And we sort of alluded to that last time uh, when we talked about database connection and, and this and that. And we said how well, you know, you'll connect to the database, do your thing, and then you're no longer connected. All right, it's not like a desktop application where you may connect to the database at the top of it and stay connected through the duration. Um, it's a stateless protocol, HTTP, yet, if you think about it, something else must be handling state, right? If the protocol doesn't handle state, something else might handle state. Because there's clearly cases where it sure looks like a web application that you're interacting with remembers something that happened before. All right. Another way of saying that it's a, a stateless protocol would be to say that the, that the protocol doesn't remember any previous requests. So you make a request, you make a second request, it doesn't really remember. The protocol itself, there's nothing in the protocol that remembers, hey, you made some other request a couple minutes ago. Therefore, it has to be maintained some other way. And, and clearly it is maintained, otherwise would have problems such as this. All right. You log into Angel. All right. You go to the first page. You log into it. It takes you to a page of your classes. All right. Let's say you click on one of your classes. Do you need to log in again? I sure hope not. Right. That would be unworkable if every page that you visited in Angel, you would have to log in each time. All right. And yet, it, it remembers who you are. You know, you log in once, it remembers who you are. And if you send an email, it knows it's you. If you uh, bounce around from page to page to page, it remembers it's you. And it, it shows you your proper classes. And if you submit an assignment, it will submit it for you. So obviously, it's remembering who you are, despite the fact that the protocol itself isn't uh, it is a stateless one. It doesn't remember anything about your previous requests. So, how is state managed? Another way, to, another way to ask the question is, what are some of the ways that one page knows what happened on another page? 
Can you have the server like hold a session for you? Yeah. Uh, one of the ways that you can do it, and in fact the way that it would be done in the angel example is with what are called session variables. All right, we'll talk about session variables more in a minute. That'll actually be sort of the bulk of today's discussion uh, about session variables. Now, that's one way, though. All right, there's other ways, and we'll talk more about session variables in in a minute here. I was reading up on that on the internet. Uh huh. Well, what's another one? Uh, you can pass query streams with yeah. that information. You can, uh, right. And then they had names for other ways of doing it. You can include data on the query string. I mean, quite simply, you do a search in Google you're passing that field from the entry page to the results page. Right? So that is a simplistic form of state management. All right? And that is probably handled by passing on the query string. So that's one way. Uh, another way of saying how to maintain state is how to pass some data from one page to another. All right? So between just passing one page to another, you can always use a query string. You can also use what's called the forms collection. And the forms collection is when you do a post of the form, the query string is when you use the get of a form. In addition, you can, you can make your links include a query string, all right? Like we've done in, in our assignments where we make the link to the edit page contain the ID of the thing we want to edit. That's, that's a way of maintaining state. That's saying, hey, I clicked on this item on this page, so I want it to show up on that page. So that's a way of maintaining state. So either the get or when you make the link, you include a, a, a values on the query string, or the forms collection. Now, one thing that we don't uh, stress in this class, and um, we, we had an example where I used it in the 232 class, um, but also associated with this are what are called hidden form fields. Next time we pull up a web form, let's look at the source. You'll see some gigantic hidden fields, all right, uh, that are in the source. And what is that? Well, I don't know. I don't know what it uses internally. I could probably guess at some things. But it's, it's a way of passing data from page to page to page that's not visible to the user. All right, the casual user that's just looking at the page on their screen um, doesn't see those hidden fields. And they can be used with the query string and the forms collection. Session variables, again, uh, a, a session on the server can be used to maintain things for multiple pages. This typically is used to pass from one page to another, not multiple pages. So your query string passes the fact that you've queried for HTML from the form to the results page. Probably doesn't go any further than that. You could, they could have written Angel this way, but it probably wouldn't be a good idea. They could have written Angel so that when you log on, all the links on the site include your user ID in the query string, just as we include the um, just as we include uh, the, the, the automobile ID or the, the faculty ID or whatever on the query string. But that's probably not a good idea. First of all, it's going to be a pain to do that. You have to alter all your uh, uh, links. And in addition, there was potential security things. Yes. Was, that was just going to be my question yeah. for you on an unsecured network if you're logging in. Yeah. Things. Is that where they can, what do they call it, sniffing? Um, uh, again, pull stuff out of hidden fields. Is that where they're? You know, uh, hidden fields. Hidden fields. You know, you can. It's easier than that. You can just look at. You know, you can just look at uh, the source code for it. I, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, what I mean, like if I typed oh. in a password and it was, you know, it's yeah, it's yeah, it. yeah. That that's yeah, that's something else. Uh, but again, 
just in general, it's not a good idea to pass that kind of information on the query string. Um, all right. Yes? So what would a cookie be? Ah, a cookie would be the last thing on our list. All right. A cookie A session variables are used to pass data between multiple pages. We'll call that one browser session. So session variables will be available no matter where you go during that session. During that one browser session, right. Now I'll define what I mean by a session later on, but I think intuitively we know what it is. In other words, if I go and open my browser, go to Angel, log on, it stores that in a session variable, all right? As I go from page to page, grading all my stuff, checking my emails and all that, my browser session is still active. I close out of the window and go home for the day, come back the next day, it's a new session. All right. We'll define it more precisely in a minute here, but that's in general what I mean by a session, a browser session. A period of time you spend on a website in a browser. A cookie will allow you to hold data um, between multiple sessions. And that's done by putting a little file on your computer that contains information. So, an example for that would be um, if you log into Gmail, for example, you can click stay logged in. All right? In which case, when I go to my Gmail account, it doesn't prompt you with a password. It takes me right into my list because I've, I've clicked that and made a cookie. And therefore, between browser sessions, it remembers who I am. All right? Now you can set a cookie to expire, so you could force a person to log in every couple of weeks if you wanted to. I've seen sites that have done that and, and so on. But a cookie, little file that's stored, and it extends it to multiple sessions. Now, don't be confused between these and little things that your browser does to help you out. For example, if I go into Angel on my browser at home, it brings up my user ID. That's not really done by a cookie. That's done by uh, functionality within the browser. So that's a different sort of thing. All right. Um, in general, these are the ways that we maintain state. All right. These two, we, I don't think we really need to talk in much detail. The forms collection, again, um, you know, that's just submitting a form, all right? The query string, we've done that, all right? And we've seen how that works. We're really going to focus on sessions. Cookies, we, we might mention if we have time, but we're really going to focus on sessions. Now, let's talk about sessions, all right? And let's wonder why there's no eraser here. Did Huffman pitch an eraser at someone in this room? Come he on, pitched does, that, a marker, does anyone have him previous eraseries. to that? <laughs> he pitched a marker and it almost hit me, but hmm. <laughs> other than that. Yeah, I don't. I'll is there, check across the way. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, there's one back there. There's one back there. All right. So, let's talk about it more precisely what we mean about a session. Browser session start. Fire up the page. Yeah, when you access um, a page on the site. All right. Now that doesn't mean it's remembering anything about you, right? If if, if I go to ESPN.com, let's say, a browser session has started. It won't necessarily remember anything, you know. Uh, about me from previous times, unless, I don't know if you can log into that page with the user ID, but a session starts when you visit a page. When does a session end? 
<laughs> yeah, it ends like that. Yeah. Now, when does a session end? This is a tr this is a trick question. And the pages done No. No? Right? Because look at it this way. Let's think, let's think back to talk when, about an HTTP being a stateless protocol. Sent. Pardon me? When the response is sent. No. Because again, if I log into Angel, the page finishes loading, a response has been sent, that session is still active. So I don't have to log on every time I go to page to page to page. All right? Let me ask you another question. Oh, How does... Well... That, that, okay, when you log off, that's true. Yes? It could also be when the network is set for the user when to log off. Repeat that, please. When, I'm not sure how to say it, but you can set the network to end the session, a part of the network, so that they can only stay on for so long. Okay. And it'll turn off their session. So okay. Uh, right. What you do is, is uh, within the web server, you can set a session timeout. All right, that's the two ways sessions end. All right, they time out or you log off. All right, log off, I guess, is a is a is a typically what it's called. But you either explicitly your code explicitly ends the session, or the session times out. Because let's let's think about it. How does a browser know? How does a browser know? Or no, let me. Let me rephrase that. How does the server know that you've closed your browser window? Does it? If I'm, if I'm browsing on Angel and I close the, the server window or the, the browser window, there's like no notification sent to the browser that's, or to the server that says, hey, this person closed their browser window. So it can't clobber the session then. Even, let's say I'm grading stuff, I get bored. I decide to watch a couple of episodes of The Office on Netflix. So I type Netflix. I go over there. I start watching an episode. Server doesn't know that I've stopped grading stuff, right? At least not at first. All right? It doesn't know I went to another site. We don't send a signal to the Angel saying, this guy is off of Angel and on a Netflix now. All right? So therefore, how is it going to know? The only way it can know is if it hasn't gotten any activity. All right. So, let's say I start grading stuff and I go to lunch. All right. When I come back, will my session be there or not? It depends. It depends on how the web server is configured and what the timeout is. Let's say I take a short lunch and I'm only gone 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe it's still there. Let's say I take a two or three hour lunch. Yeah, it's probably gone by the time I get back. So. Keep in mind that the server doesn't know anything about what you've done other than whether you've been requesting pages from it or not. So Angel server knows that I'm requesting pages from it. Angel doesn't know if I'm requesting pages from anyone else. If I've closed my browser window, if I've shut down my computer, if I've gone home for the day. The only thing that the server knows is, have you been requesting or not? And if you request at a certain rate, you know, once every X minutes, it keeps your session alive. If you exceed the timeout period, it will uh, clobber your session. Now, choosing the session time, choosing the session timeout, what would be the disadvantage of making the session timeout too short? Let's say I make the session timeout five <coughs> minutes. So that if there's inactivity for five minutes, my session is over, and it forgets everything about me. What's the downside of that? Yes. If they're filling out a form and they're looking yeah. at information, it could stop them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes me more than five minutes to grade something. So I pull up someone's assignment, I look at it, um, I think about it, scratch my head, maybe go get a cup of coffee, whatever, all right? And if it, if it timed out too quickly, then before I had a chance to... You know, I've been working on it, I haven't been letting it go, but by the time I have a chance to respond, it will have clobbered my session and, and I would have lost that. Or, in Angel, if you had a test to take, all right? Let's say you're taking an online test, 
and it takes you an hour to finish it. it well, if your session uh, timeout is set to five minutes, you'd only get five minutes to complete that test, because otherwise it would forget who you are by the time you went to submit it. So the, the, uh, the downside of creating a session too short is you might make the application unworkable or impractical for people to use, because you may legitimately be working without any request to the server, and yet uh, it thinks you're done, and therefore it clobbers you. What's the downside of letting a session go too long? Okay, five minutes is too short, let's make it five hours. What would be the downside of that? Yeah, number one would be security, right? If I walk away from my computer in my office and I end up having a long discussion with someone and uh, I don't get back there, eh, you know, I'm, I'm logged into that site and that, that's not good from a security perspective. Yes? Traffic to on the site, it could hurt traffic. Not necessarily traffic uh, to the site because, again, if I'm just sitting there, I'm not doing anything, but I'm, I'm chewing up server resources, right? The server has to keep track of me, all right, no matter what, all right? So if it keeps track of me for five hours no matter what, every time I pop onto Angel and check my email, there's five hours of the server's time devoted to remembering who, who, that's, uh, who that person that logged on in that browser session is, even though I may have closed my browser, logged off, and gone home for the day, all right? So really picking the... Picking the, the proper timeout time for a browser session is uh, a balance of what's usable on the site versus, um, versus um, what, what's going to constitute uh, A, a security problem, but B, uh, a system drain of remembering all those things. All right? Because, again, the more things the server has to keep track of, the harder is it going to be. So if it has to keep track of all these little mini sessions for ages, then, well, hey, uh, that, that's a problem. Now, the other thing we can do is we can explicitly log off and clobber the session and just say, yep, I'm done, that's it. All right, let's play around with these session variables a little bit. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pass data between several different pages. So there's nothing exciting about this example, but it'll just show how sessions work. Now, one thing about session timeouts is within the web server, you have a default timeout, all right? Um, you can then change that default timeout for a particular action. So for example, if I go in to take a quiz in Angel, I can set the session timeout to be a longer period of time than if I've just logged on to log on, right? Which kind of makes sense. All right? So let's go and look at an example where we're going to remember stuff between several different pages. So I'm going to start with a brand new application here. And we might just do some goofy stuff. I don't know. We might count the number of times someone clicks a button. All right? Or we might count, we might remember a person's name or whatever. So we'll play around with this and, and, and see what we get. You can then apply it to a lot of different things. You can apply it to logging on to a website. You can apply it to remembering what someone's last choice was so that you can default the next time to it. You can use this for a number of different things. So I'm going to go in and create a new website. And I'll call it state. Actually, I'll create an empty website. Tell you what, for laughs, I'm going to create a, a website instead of an empty website. I don't think we've done this this semester. This will just show you sort of what, what 
it will do for you. Um, and actually, it creates a kind of nice looking site with some things, and, and we might as well use it once a semester, anyhow. So I'll say I'm going to create a website, and I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call the application state. Now, look what it look what it did for us. It actually created, it actually cranked out um, several different pages for us. All right, it created already our app data folder for us. It created an account folder where you could incorporate some logon stuff, a scripts folder, a style folder. It created an about page, a home page, a site master file page, and a web config page. So yeah, it does, does some nice stuff for you. Um, <coughs> let's go and do maybe probably uh, the simplest thing that we could do um, on here is we'll record a, a person's name and then we will um, store it in a session variable and then we will put it on other pages. So let me go in here, lop all this stuff out. Gonna put H1 here. Um, oops. Let me go and grab a text box. Here. And a button. in their own paragraph. Oops. <coughs> okay, there we go. Let's call this TXT name. Let's call this button remember. And we'll click here. All right. Now, first thing I'm going to do is let's write the code for this. So I'll go in the code behind file. And to remember a session variable, it's actually pretty easy. You simply say session, then you give that session variable a name. And I'll give it a name of username. And then I can say that equals, well, txt name dot text. So that remembers it at, in a session variable. Okay. That's being remembered on the server, so it'll stay on the server until that session. It'll stay out on the server until that server dies, so uh, until that server session dies. Right. So you can reference the username, and they'll bring yep. that back every time. Exactly. Where you are. Exactly. Cool. So let's go and let's. Uh, I, I, we could run this and test this now, but it really wouldn't do any good, right? Because we'd save it, and we're not showing it anywhere. So we'll be like, okay, we're saving it, and you know. And what? So let's go in and let's make a couple. Well, we have an about page. All right. Let's go make a couple of pages. Let's 
make a new web form, 